Hey guys, welcome. This is kind of a little special treat. Lionsgate blessings to all. I'm bringing you a special Lionsgate reading. Leo is here joining us. Leo, say hello. Hello. Yeah, so this is an extra added reading. Um, we It's not just 8-8, eight, eight, it's 8-8-8. Eight, 8-8-8. Eight, eight, eight. Eight, eight, eight. Um, but before I jump in, I'm bringing you a little special gifty. Um, and I do want to let you know that there are some links that I'm going to be pointing you to in the description box. No, don't eat that. Those are my notes. And, um, so, and it's like, you guys often compliment me on my jewelry, my crystal bracelets. And so I want to share something with you because I got in touch with the um, company and we worked out a little deal. So it's a company called Otter Spirit and I am, uh, Full disclosure, I am going to get a little commission for anyone that buys, but you get 20% off. So I'm sharing it with you. This is this gorgeous, look, Otter Spirit, otterspirit.com. It's pretty simple. But I wanted to show you um, how it kind of comes. I was so surprised. It says inside each gemstone tells a unique story. Now it's time to write your own. Comes. Now I got three separate boxes because I ordered um, like um, a collection, right? So look at these gorgeous bracelets. This is Labradorite. And if you've seen, I, I often keep a stone here. It's this one, which is really good for intuition. And Moonstone, of course, and um, the all too famous and popular Amethyst. But these stones are gorgeous. So let me tell you, about them, you get a card that tells you all about the stone. Well, that's kind of hard to see, um, but really beautiful packaging, which I was pleasantly surprised about because normally not so much. But what's good about this company is more than 80% of their gemstones are ranked grade AAA or that's superior. And um, so very high quality. And I liked that they are a small, family run um, company with a charitable uh, uh, and nature focused spirit. And they donate $1 per bracelet to protect sea otters. So otter spirit. And I was, I thought that was fun because they're based in Monterey, California. The sea otters are at risk of becoming extinct. So it spoke to their heart and that spoke to mine. The website is amazing, which is what really got my attention. I'm a Virgo, as most of you know. So I'm a stickler for organization. And there, I mean, I could have found each one of these bracelets individually, which would have taken some time. But what they did was that the way they have it organized is um, they have it by season, so their summer collection right now is available at 30% off, so you might not even need the discount I'm offering. Excuse me, Leo. Mm -hmm. um, but they had like um, in, the, in the tabs across the top, it said it's, you can shop by intention. I'm such an intention girl. So I was going down through, I scrolled through, and I saw, are you ready? Wait for it. Divine feminine and I was like that's it and it was three of my favorite stones so um, you can order I got the regular stones you can get mini they're a little smaller small medium large obviously they have a fantastic return policy um, and they tell you what the stones are best used for their elements their chakras off affirmations it's literally one of the best sites I've ever seen with one of the best quality, highest quality stones I've ever seen. And I've actually communicated with their top people. The owner even reaches out, make sure you're happy. So if you like what you see <laughs> and you want to deal with somebody that I am telling you, is um, really worth a look-see. Go to otterspirit.com or there is a special link below. It is my special link. Click that and you can use the discount code there if you are interested in grabbing yourself um, a new bracelet or necklace. They have really beautiful, gorgeous necklaces too. So that is my gift to you on this 
very powerful day, Lion's Gate. Now let's get to those details. So Lion's Gate portal is considered to be open between the end of July and the middle of August. It's, it's um, an alignment, an astral alignment. That's what that's about. Um, and, you know, somewhere between the 26th and 28th of August and 12th to the 14th, I mean, 26th to 28th of July, 12th to 14th of August. This year, 26th to the 12th of August. But we use 8-8 eight, eight, um, in the spiritual community. Due to numerology, that number, 8-8, eight, eight, has a lot of power behind it. And that's so the worldwide tradition is 8-8. Eight, eight. And this year, because it's 2024, when you add up 2 and 2 and 4, it's 8. So we have an 888 eight, eight. so hence the power of um that is exponentially amplified and enhanced that's why i'm doing this special reading it's not a spread i've ever done before so lion's gate can be a gateway to higher realms of consciousness wisdom and understanding this is a time when the veil between the physical and spiritual realms is thinner the pace of our personal and collective evolution accelerates. That's why I keep telling you it's an ascension portal and we have a chance to embody a new level of consciousness. Um, the private readings, that special private reading offer is still going 88 off of my regular rates because I want to help you with your ascension process. I want to show you uh, where you want to come from a higher vibration, what your higher self is trying to show you. The Lion's Gate portal and the, is, um, and the activation of the star Sirius, which S-I-R-I-U-S for those who aren't really familiar, which is considered our spiritual sun, offers us opportunities to deepen our connection with our higher self, to receive guidance from higher realms, and set intentions with greater clarity and potency. Yes, I am reading all my notes today because 63, not a lot of good <laughs> memory cells left. But I love you all and I wanted to bring you something special. Let me get my final notes out, which is the spread that I worked on all last night to be able to bring you something really special. There will be no extended for this. I'm just coming in. I'm reading. I'm going to set it for... Um, a premiere so once once it comes up i'm gonna be in the chat it's not a live i don't do those because crazy people come in and yell at me um but <laughs> i will premiere it and i will be in the chat as you watch it so feel free to say hey all right here we go general reading for the collective doesn't matter what your sign is this is for all of us from me to you i'm wearing all my divine feminine energy i know this isn't lion but it's big cat energy that's what i'm throwing on the table how would that be bce laura's throwing bce <laughs> oh i'm in such a good mood this is my grandma's birthday god rest her soul I was very close to her. Nobody liked her. Oh my God, this is so terrible to say. Nobody liked my grandma Esther, nobody. I was the only one that liked her and the only one she liked, which is probably why no one liked her. Um, meaning, because nobody, like, nobody talked to her but me and now I know why. I'm going to pull the cards. Oh my gosh. And they're not going to fit right, but oh my gosh. Because it's a weird spread. Oh. I could cry. So it's eight cards, but of course I could cry. Oh, I'm like shaking. So card number one is Ascension Guidance. It's the sun. OK, 
Okay, so your ascension guidance is you're being shown this path to your happiness, to success, to feeling safe and protected in your vulnerability with yourself. Is this the sun is yourself? It's who you are, it's who you're meant to be. It's the purest version of who you are. And you know, I read for relationship, okay? So card number two is your connection. Knight of Wands. It is about inspiration, right? It is about acting in the moment. It is about passion. And for those of you who are sort of, you know, wondering, will it come back around? It very well could. But there's also something here about the in and out of it all, right? So we want to be aware that we're talking about in Lion's Gate. We're talking about ascension. Okay, so we want to we want to just stick a pin in this for a hot second. The opportunity for this this Lion's Gate, and we're talking about your connection here, is about the Six of Swords. It's about getting to calmer waters, moving past the turbulence to something calmer, to some peace of mind. And what's at the foundation of all of this for you? It's victory, chariot, it's success, it's triumph. It's, oh, it, it's moving past both of these cards. Six of swords is the calmer version, right? So that's the opportunity. But, but the foundation is sort of saying there's progress to be made. We're always working on the progress. Okay? Now, card number five in our little uh, spread is a blocker challenge to be cleared from this connection. Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles is, is usually talking about um, something where there isn't a sense of security where we're feeling some sense of rejection or abandonment, but it's coming from um, a place where we may have felt devalued at some point along the way, and then we freaking internalized it. That block or challenge has to be cleared, has to be removed, and that may be an inside job. Card number six is the strength or the gift being added to the connection, two of wands. The gift is the path before you. What do you want? Right? The two of wands says in a world she's got the globe there. And she's looking out the window, which is in essence that horizon for the, from the normal deck. I picked the life seers tarot, right? So when we're looking out on the horizon in a world of possibilities, the question is, what do we want? What do you want for this connection? Which path is likely to get you there? This one, ain't it, right? What do we want in a world of possibilities? Which path is likely to get me there? Hmm. And what do I have to set in motion so that it will arrive? That's the gift. You get to choose the path. I just did the Cancerian reading. I think it was the Cancerian reading. And I think I said, it's the divine feminine who's choosing that path. Oh, I'm getting so excited. Okay, so card number seven, a past lesson that's being completed. Nine of wands, we're almost there. We're almost there, right? This past lesson is one of perseverance, of pushing through when the going gets tough. We don't give up, we keep going. It can be exhausting, but look at her face. She's given some side eyes. She's like, yeah, don't test me. Do not test me. I am almost at the summit of this mountain. I am not turning down. I'm not turning back. I'm not going down. Nope. Brilliant. Right? In past lessons, maybe we've, you know, kind of, we've kind of given up. We've kind of not wanted to. Keep taking the hits. This is being completed. The next card out is the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is offload that heavy burden. Done. Now, your Lion's Gate 888 manifestation goal is patience. The seeds have been planted. Look where all the 
all the energy is below the soil. He's nurturing the little shoots that are coming up. You know how I talk about this when, when we're using the normal um, rider weight deck and, and you see the, the guy with the rake or the hoe or whatever the heck he's got there and he's leaning up against it and there's these pinnacles there and I say the day you plant the seed is not the day the garden grows. This is what I'm really trying to illustrate is this because all the action is beneath the soil where the ground is fertile and the pentacles are really kind of growing and it takes time and it happens organically so that is your manifestation goal is about what how you tend to the top of the soil with your intentions is how is what grows it's what you do when you can't see the results that sort of, it's what, it's what you do when you, you know, like I watch the Olympics. I don't know, me and maybe half the rest of the world. Watch the Olympics for the past few weeks, you know? And it's like, you think, oh my gosh, like where, like how do you get to do that? Well, they didn't get to do that in like the last four years. They've been doing it since they're this many, <laughs> okay? Since they could only say like, how old are you? I'm this many, like that's the thing that I'm trying to say. Your Lionsgate 888 manifestation goal is patience and a willingness to understand that it's what you do once you've set the intentions. It's what you do when you can't see the results right away that matters most. Okay, I know. So I'm not gonna like give lots and lots of um, clarification. I'm, I'm gonna do what feels best to me. I'm gonna go on my intuition. I wanna serve you best, but I don't wanna... I don't wanna flood this energy, it's all so beautiful. your ascension guidance it's beautiful. there's so much happiness available to you there's so much joy available to you in this connection let this be your guidance for this portal the sun rules the sign of leo we are in 888 as i record this I've like struggled all day to get to this reading because my energy has been like high octane. I don't like I drink maybe one cup of coffee and I have not been able to settle my energy. And it's still like, I don't think I'm gonna get settled. So I'm bringing you this reading and now I see why I've been like this all day. Whew. So what I really wanna see for this connection is what is this message of the Knight of Wands? That's really important to me. Focus on the feelings. There's deeper feelings here. Um, the Knight of Wands is all the bravado. The Knight of Wands is the chemistry. The Knight of Wands is the sex part, right? Is the, is the passion, is the, you know, operating in the moment. And I'm talking about both parties. It's not a one-sided thing, but sometimes it can feel that way. Um, but there's something deeper here. And there may be difficulty sometimes, especially for those of you who are dealing with somebody who struggles to express their feelings. Doesn't matter, male, female, doesn't matter. King of Cups struggles with that. Not for the lack of feeling something deeply. So I, I'm feeling like with the connection, um, that may be something with regard to this portal that you may wanna focus on, right? because that's where we end up getting hurt. And look where, look, six of swords, that's the opportunity, <laughs> all right? We wanna move to calmer waters. We don't wanna stay in hurt feelings because 
You know, somebody may be a little bit more physically focused or the other one of us is more deep emotions focused and somewhere in the middle, you know, we don't feel always safe. Um, maybe there are different love languages for some of you. That's possible. But this is an ascension portal. So we're focused on how we navigate that. This is a navigation card travel card I'm calling it a navigation card for now so I love that in the unconscious awareness of it all from the bottom of the deck the next card out is the opportunity from the top of the deck how do we navigate it six of swords the opportunity for this connection six of swords we move away from what feels like an unfair fight what feels like a zero sum game. If I can't have my way, we're all, screw it. I'll just, I'll just go on my own. I'll just be on my own. I'll just go, right? So the opportunity is sort of a peace thing here. The sixes are about balance, finding balance, at least in our perceptions, and maybe even communication. Swords are about that. And I am seeing with the Five of Swords, you know, the Five of Swords can be um, a little sabotage-y. It can be a little gossipy. It can be a little bit of, you know, s stuff that we feel is being done behind our back. Um, and sometimes we get this impression that, well, maybe I sh I'm just better off on my own. Um, and the Eight of Cups here, it can be a, I'll just go my own way, but it can also be what we need to kind of leave behind. It's not serving us anymore. And I'm not saying leave the relationship behind. That's not, that is not what the divine guidance is. The divine guidance is about what you have between you that is so beautiful and so illuminated, like lit up. And like this stuff, this, t this twisted energy isn't serving. To me, the Eight of Cups in this part of the reading is about like, let that go. This relationship should not need to be about a zero sum game. There's something bigger here potentially. And please remember, this is a general reading. It may not resonate for everybody. If it's already rubbing you the wrong way, then it's not your reading. And that's okay. The foundation here, though, for those of you who are still listening, um, is that there's an opportunity here for progress. For progress and for victory and triumph. For the past life soulmates, to take you back to what brings you a sense of comfort, right? That warmth, that connectedness, that feeling like you've known each other forever. And let me tell you why, because you probably Cross lifetimes, cross time and space. And that can be a little unsettling. It can be a little unnerving. There's something bigger here at work in this connection. Very beautiful. Very powerful. And, and, and there's a part of it that I want to tell you is just so simple. It doesn't have to be this hard. Right? I say it a million times. We're souls having a human experience. It's the human part of it that makes it all so complicated. The souls have it all figured out. It's the human part that makes it huh, near impossible. 
So let's look at the block challenge that needs to be cleared from the connection. Right, <laughs> five of pentacles because it's in the way of your happily ever after. This is, if you're a soul having a human experience, this is your birthright. It's available to you. Okay, so clear this energy of, I can't have nice things, I'm not worthy, uh, right? Because what I'm seeing here is you are worthy. So once you turn this up on its head, and then this, this gets back into your viewfinder. One, once you go like this, then this is something you see as possible. And you heal. And then that nine of cups is like, okay, things haven't been perfect, but I have a lot of self-satisfaction for all that I've come through. It feels pretty darn good. There's some wish fulfillment because it feels like, oh, all right, well, things weren't great, but I came through that. And now, feels nice, feels good. Because the 10 of cups in this particular part of the spread isn't about the, like, that it that it's there that it's just lands in your lap it's about being able to envision it being able to kind of see that and allowing it to be part of your healing process that yeah i deserve it i am worthy of it and then through that healing process you come out of it like yeah that feels good i know what i'm worthy of so that's part of your challenge or whatever's blocking all of this energy being cleared now the strength and the gift being added is the two of wands right because you have to have a path something that you know you want to aim for let's see the two of wands yes getting your mojo back i know what i want i'm not going to accept any substitutions Queen of Wands, right? <laughs> no more. No, 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 no. So these two feel very um, connected. Um, almost like I wish I had done them reversed. Uh, very, yes. So we're closing out the Five of Pentacles cycle so that the new cycle can begin where our hearts are open to the construct of that happily ever after. It ushers in a lot of healing, a lot of emotional self-satisfaction, some wish fulfillment. Our self-esteem comes roaring back in and we become what? Unstoppable. This is really more feeling like it's speaking to divine feminine energy, quite frankly. I know I'm talking about taking a, something away from the connection and as something being added to the connection, but if one of the divine counterparts has sort of been wounded, energetically wounded, um, right? There's a repair that's needed so that all the rest of this can flow. It's like a chakra being realigned. There's a chakra blockage that I'm feeling here for the connection. If, if you can get that visual, that might help what I'm seeing so that the rest of the connection can kind of get back on track. That's how I'm seeing it. Okay, past lesson being completed. Hmm. Oh, well here, five of cups, past mistakes, regrets of the past, mistakes of the past, grief, loss, sorrow. But we're coming in the nine of wands and like the seven of cups, lots of confusion, 
lots of like not knowing where to look for the answers and so possibly giving up um, and maybe having regrets about that. So the lesson being complete, like this is a past lesson. It's something that plays out until you grok it. Got it? So I like the nine of wands because this would be the point where you'd kind of throw in the towel. Both of you would throw in the towel. Things would get confusing, lots of emotional ups and downs, lots of sort of, I don't understand what's going on. Maybe even with this page of swords, maybe even, you know, lots of trying to, um, this is the, you know, spire detective of the tarot. So checking people's feed, social media, doing a little reconnaissance kind of stuff. I, the way it's coming through is not the greatest of energy. And then just sort of, it's loss for one and regrets for the other and probably goes both ways. Um, and so that nine of wands, when you just about kind of get through it and then you collapse. And it's probably been very cyclical. I, I'm seeing that as completing. And here's part of that completion with the world. I wish I would see the Ten of Wands. I, I, that would have been like perfect. But the world will do. But we're completing it. We're not going back through that cycle. Now we have your Lion's Gate, right? Because we are getting the patience now. Um, Lion's Gate 888 manifestation goal is the patience. So where do we go from here from all of this? As we're working through this ascension portal is also a manifestation portal. And your goal is patience. Seven of Pentacles and the Fool and the King of Swords and the Hangman. Oh, pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I know what it means. Um, yeah, it's, um, I'm seeing like the fool is about a little risk assessment, but also like leap in the net will appear has some, some application here because we're being patient, but we also don't want to like clench too tight. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Oh, for those of you who follow me regularly, you know what I mean. Um, and the King of Swords is the strategist of the tarot, wants to do the right thing. It's about honor and integrity. And so this is about, you know, you know, kind of trusting a leap in the net will appear. And the hanged man underneath is then some surrender. So we've got this message that says something is growing. You got to set your intentions, push them deep down in the fertile soil. Take care of what you can't see once you plant those seeds. Take care of it. Take care of it at every opportunity. Make sure you are in line, in alignment with the intentions you have set. Make sure you are not acting against your own best interest, right? By sabotaging your own intentions. No, you have to stay in alignment now. This is your ascension guidance. This is it. This is what you're after. This is it. It's everything from this point forward. And then, yeah, there are risks associated in all matters of the heart, in all ways, okay? But you ha there's a certain amount of trust that you're dealing with someone who's honorable and there's a certain amount of surrender that you're connected to the divine, that you are one with the divine, that you were sent here to meet in this moment with this person, to merge your soul with this person, at least for a reason, for a season, maybe a lifetime. Got it? Powerful reading. 
take from it what speaks to you. Make this a special moment, at least for yourself. Um, because there's really something really beautiful here for everybody to incorporate into their own energy field, for their own um, higher self, for their own vibration, for their own rituals, for, you know, for your own growth. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me. I hope, don't forget you got links there so that you can grab some beautiful, go to the website, use the link, um, and I will see you in a future reading. Mayan's Gate, blessings to all. Bye for now.